In this chapter, we're going to be talking about sound, and more specifically, we're going to be talking about the production of sound. Next chapter will be how humans and other animals receive sound. But in this chapter, so next five videos, we're going to be talking about the production of sound. So, production of sound, what's sound is the first question before we talk about the production of sound. Um, sound travels in a medium, and a medium is basically anything that has particles in it. So what I mean by that is anything that has is either solid, liquid, or gaseous. These are so called because they have particles, right? So in the air itself, there are particles all around, even though we can't see them. Obviously, water has particles. Water particles would be the example of what water has, and then even glass. So here, in this case, we've got glass being broken by a sound. Glass is a solid. And there are lots of glass particles inside, not called, they're not called glass particles, but there's solid particles inside the glass that make up the glass. So each of these has these particles, and that's what we call a medium, something that we can move, that we can change, so that sound can travel. Sound cannot travel in a vacuum. And a vacuum means that there will be no sound, no particles at all, no particles at all. And the example would be space. Space is a vacuum which means sound cannot travel in space. And I'm going to give you an example of that in a second. But so the first thing we know about sound, sound travels in the medium. And how it travels, well, it, the, it travels by transferring energy from one particle to another. So for example, here we have a stereo. This would be just your normal speaker, like a loudspeaker. This would be your stereo. And here we have the ear. But it's important to realize that, for example, these particles, particles that are closest to the actual stereo, they won't be moving, they won't be moving to the ear. What they do is they actually, they're going to be vibrating and they're going to transfer their energy to the particles around them. And those particles will then transfer the energy against the particles around them again. So there's no movement of particles, it's just a transfer of energy. And we're going to cover that more in the next video. But it's important to realize that when it comes to the movement of sound, sound is a movement of energy, not a movement of particles. And sound waves have something called amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. Amplitude is just basically, amplitude is a volume. And what we mean by amplitude is the size of the actual length. So we've got the size of this actual wave is the amplitude, right? And it's more or less the same as saying the volume. So the higher this actual wave, the, the, the louder the sound. So the volume is the amplitude. It also has a wavelength. Wavelength is from peak to peak. So this is at one peak, and this is another peak. And from peak to peak, that's what we call wavelength. And then we've got frequency. And frequency, frequency just means um, waves per second. So for example, if we say, this here is one second. How many waves travel here in one second? That's one wave, two wave, three wave, four wave, five wave. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six waves pass this point here per second. So it travels six hertz per second. That's what we call the unit for um, for frequency. It's just hertz. So if we say six hertz, that means six waves per second. And that's all what frequency is. Frequency is just how many waves travel past one point per second. Um, and there's also something called compression and refraction. Compression is just these points where everything is really tied together, packed tied together. That's compression. I'm going to talk about more that, about that in the next video. That's compression. And then there's also refraction. And that's just a space where there's very little. That's called refraction. But we're going to cover that a bit more in detail in the next video. But so yeah, what you should know about sound, it travels in a medium, so it has to have a medium, um, such as a solid, liquid, or gas. It, can trans it has to transfer energy from one particle to another. It doesn't, the particles don't move. So for example, this doesn't move to the ear, but rather it transfers its energy to the next. Um, and also, it has an amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. Amplitude is just the size of this actual, the, the height of this wave, which is the volume. The wavelength is from peak to peak, so how far between these two are. And the frequency is, if we say this is one second, the whole thing is one second, we would count how many waves pass that point in one second. So that would be the f frequency. 
Now, Tim's dot point says explain why sound is a useful and versatile form of communication. So we have to explain why it's worse, why you can use sound as as a tool for communication. First of all, it's um, there are mediums that allow the sound to travel, and they can be found anywhere on Earth, right? So for example, we can find air and water basically in any part of the world. Wherever there's some animal, there's air or water. And both these are really good mediums. They have particles that can transfer the energy. So they're good mediums for the transfer of sound energy from one place to another. So that means we, if we have mediums for it everywhere, that means we can use it as a tool of communication anywhere we are, right? So in the, at the ocean um, or in a rainforest or in the sky, there's, in each of these examples, there's still this medium to be found. So we can use it as, so that's what, one of the reasons why it's a versatile form of communication, we can use it anywhere. The only place we can't use it would be, again, I said space. So imagine we've got one person here, this might be a radio, so this might be a person on Earth, who's trying to send a signal to a person maybe in a aircraft, or sorry, a spacecraft. It's trying to send a signal and they can obviously communicate, right? They can talk to each other. But how does that work if a signal can't be sent, if a, there's no medium, there's no air or there's nothing, no water in space, so there's no particles to move. So how can we transfer the energy, transfer that sound signal from Earth to space? How that would work is we would have that person speaking into a microphone. This would be the microphone. So we've got the sound making a signal be sent from the microphone into a converter. This would convert the sound into into a radio wave or a different type of wave. And this radio wave doesn't need to have a medium. It's not the same as sound. It can travel through space. So this actual radio wave will travel through space and eventually come towards a stereo. The stereo might be inside the spacecraft where this astronaut is meant to be sitting. And that's an astronaut, even though it looks like an alien, it's meant to be an astronaut. And what happens here is then once it hits the actual stereo, it will be changed back into sound. So because there's air in the, in the space craft, it can be changed from a radio wave into a um, sound wave, and then it can hit that person's um, hearing, right? So then the person can hear. I just had a bit of a blank moment. Um, so that's, that's just why space, we can still communicate in space, not because sound can travel, but because we can use it, we can send a sound signal for these radio waves and then change it back into sound afterwards. But yeah, on Earth itself, so on Earth, we, we have got mediums everywhere um, because water and air are really good mediums and even quite a few solids. So for example, um, sound can travel for quite a bit of glass, right? So if you yell for glass, you can often still hear on the other side because you still have sound traveling through quite a few solid mediums as well. In terms of um, another reason why it's a useful form of communication, animals can make more than one sound. If they can only make one sound, it would be bad for communication. But I mean, we've got different types of sounds. Obviously, humans have language, which means we have got a huge amounts of different types of sounds. And these sounds form symbols, and that's why we can communicate with language. But even other animals that don't have language can still have different types of sounds that might say um, something in terms of, you know, there might be danger. They might use one sound for danger, one sound for a greeting sound, saying hello, it might be a different type of sound, etc., etc. Right. So because we can make different types of sounds, we can we can send a message from one from one member to another member of a species. Right? So language and sound, different types of sounds are one example, and it's very useful because that means we can convey lots of different types of messages. Another thing would be that we can change the pitch and the amplitude. Um, I'm going to cover pitch more in the future, but pitch is just basically if I have this kind of sound, that's like a deep pitch, right? whereas this kind of sound, that's a high pitch. Um, and amplitude is just that was again that was volume. So we can change the pitch, or we can change the volume. So for example, if someone's scared, they're gonna have a really high pitch. They're gonna their voice is going to um, sound scared because of the difference in pitch. So we can convey a message through changing the pitch. Even if we say the same words, if we have a different pitch, it still changes the message in general. Same with amplitude. If we are angry at someone, we might have a, a really loud voice. We might yell at them. And that yelling, that change in amplitude, gives gives off a different message, right? If if I say something with really polite, some if say five or six words in a normal volume compared to a really loud volume, 
then those same words might sound threatening in loud volume, but normal in the normal volume. So changing the volume, changing the loudness, can change the actual type of message being sent. And that's, again, that's also important when it comes to communication, because that means because we can change amplitude and pitch, we can use, have even more variety in terms of how we can use sound as a medium. And sound can travel long distances and can travel around corners, right? I mean, obviously the one big example of long distances would be in the ocean. A whale has a huge amount of water it can travel through in terms of sound for it to go from one place to the next. So waves um, travel, sound waves travel long distances, especially in water, but also in air. So that means we can communicate from people far away. They don't just have to be really close by. And also they can travel around corners, right? So we don't have to be um, seeing someone. So if we've got two people Visual communication, so sight, we would have to see that person. But sound communication, even if there is, let's say, there's a fence, because we've got the actual sound that can go around corners, we can still reach that person. So we don't need to have um, sight. We don't need to see him. But they can be far away and they can still reach them. So we can still communicate them with sound, even if there's something blocking the sight. So all these reasons would be examples why, we, why sound is a versatile form of communication. We said that, for example, there is a medium for transport of sound in every, in most places on Earth. So you know, air, water, um, all that stuff would be found most places on Earth. We've got animals that can make more than one sound. Humans obviously can make languages. That, that would mean we've got lots of different types of forms of communication. But also animals can make different types of sounds. And those different types of sounds, each sound can have a different type of message. So they can use sound to communicate different types of um, information. And also, we can change the pitch and the amplitude. So even if we say the same thing, if you have a different pitch or different amplitude, we would say two different, completely different things, or give across a different type of information or message by just changing those things. And sound can travel long distances and can travel around corners. So traveling around corners means that we don't have to be in sight of a person. It could be a barrier, and we can still convey a message. We can still send a message. And because long distances, same thing, we don't have to see that person, we could yell, and that means anyone who is roughly within a relatively close proximity can hear it, even if you can't be seen. So these were some examples of why sound is a versatile form of communication. Hope that was useful.